Welcome to the narrow boat that James built. I hope you're well. Thank you for joining me today on the boat. Well, as you saw in the last video, I've done the, the nav lights. Um, I don't know why I've thought there should, well, the reason I thought there should be four is because there were four here when I got the boat and there's, there, there were four on there. Um, I'm only going to go for two. The, the back two, I'm probably just going to weld up and leave them as they are um, and just have the front two. I obviously have some spare nav lights now, which well, I guess that's no bad thing. Um, loads of other bits and pieces I had to crack on with today. Did some more planning for the stove. So thank you everyone for your comments on yesterday's video um, about the positioning of the stove. That's really useful um, to get your feedback and to get your expertise on that. And also there were some real just obvious basics, which I had missed. So it's brilliant having you lot looking over my shoulder. It really is. So thank you for that. Um, other things today really it was about the hatches um i just need to get them i need to get them lined uh, and i need to get them kind of sealed so at least they close certainly during these winter months i need that um i was thinking of all sorts of different ways of doing it but i'm just gonna i'm just gonna go for plywood uh, i know everyone's gonna say oh god it's gonna fall apart in five minutes well if you treat it well it might last 10 years so i'm gonna try to treat it well and see what happens I also had to bilge out the engine bay today. Um, Paul's going to do some work in that. I also need to get the gas lockers in and the battery bank in. So I just need to clean it down, get it ready. I don't know if I'm going to have the time really to do the full treatment like vac tan and then um, primer and build paint and all that stuff. I don't think I'm going to have the time to do it now. I think I might just have to dry it out, clean it up and maybe tackle that uh, when I'm on the cut in you know the new year or something like that um i've done some more conduit as well today which had to be done i've finished my power audit so i can order my batteries i know what i'm doing there but yeah it's all about the hatches so uh let's get cracking with that okay so i'm going about making the um the, the hatches so i've got uh one two three four i've got six hatch uh, covers to make or linings um, there's quite a lot of timber involved in it and the I'm being really mindful on cost and everything now so on this one I am using some old floorboard or bits and stuff I have from the floorboard you'll see that some of it is wet so I am trimming it down and I'm going to see if what I'm left with is good enough so I've got the measurement I need for the next line, for the next cut. Now I'm cutting this with a jigsaw. The reason for that is because my circular saw has had a crash, it's fallen on the floor and it's bent the frame. So it's not, it's not cutting true anymore. So uh, that's a bit annoying. So I'm using the jigsaw, but if you use a jigsaw and a guide, to be honest with you, it's fine. So. First things first, I need to set up my guide, which is 35 mil from the cut. So I'm just using straight edge, well, the straight edge of this. And to be honest, it's actually quite easy to do. And if you use these clamps, then you can keep it, oh, you can keep it flush up to there and it, you, you can see the if the board and this are flush, you can see it against that line there. Then use your square, bring it square. I just use my eye for this to be honest and a bit of feel. And again on the other side, that should be able to go on and hold it on the square on the side of the clamp okay just click at that end as well perfect right now you'll see it moved quite a bit there's a bit of weight on that side so i'm going to clamp it down here as well check the clearance
Right. Now we just need to check the square cut. Perfect. If you take it slow, the finish you get on a on the cut like that. If you take it slow, there's not one bit of movement in that. That is superb. Now one of those, that's the factory edge. You can tell the factory edge from the cut edge all day long. So I want to keep the factory edge and I'll do the cut edge again. So 307. And this will give me, because I'm marking on the square, I only have to make one measurement. Make sure I'm clear, which I am. Okay. fine jigsaw blade there you go another perfect edge just check it's all square yeah So now, I'll have a see what it looks like. Not that it's obviously going to fit on, so I've got a lock in place. It might fit on that. There you go. But it's the right thickness, that's perfect. Right, so there's two sets of, so there's one set of boards, there's the other set, and here's the next one. I'm such an idiot. I've made so many hungry mistakes because I need my dinner. So I've cut four pieces now, all the right height, all the wrong length. So the only board I've got remaining is my trusted works bench. Well, it's either that or where I might be seeing coffee, but there's no way I'm giving that up. So it is the workbench. So I'm gonna have to make a new workbench so I can then use this piece of wood. Brilliant. Right, so I've made myself a new workbench, annoyingly. Too much spare of this, so this is the uh, this is the offcuts 
well more off cuts from the floor. But uh, there's a little couple of grooves for it to sit inside. Oh, that's all right. Right. Oh, that's actually a bit better. It's bigger than my last one, so. All right. Speak of the devil. Right, so all the boards are here now. These are for the bow bedroom. These ones here are for the galley, or that one there. And these ones here are for the dinette hatch. Now, I know what you're thinking. These do look a bit scuffy and crappy, and they are. However, I've just sanded this one down, and actually these two. It takes about, to be honest with you, about 20 minutes per board just to get the first sanding coat done. Um, so it is a bit of a labour of love, but there's rain beating down, well, kind of pattering down on the narrow boat. I've got the wall on by Pink Floyd, obviously, um, and it's quite pleasant. Well, it's really pleasant. I enjoy a night like this, just sanding. It's, uh, it's kind of really therapeutic. I've got a cup of tea on the go, obviously. And just taking my time, uh, it's really quite enjoyable. So those two are kind of, I say done, the first bit's done. Then I'm going to apply a whole load of different stuff. So black bitumen to the back of it. Um, and I'm then going to use some water, waterproof PVA for the sides. I've got this, I've got a bit of that left, which is gonna go on the front face uh, which is that wood treatment I use for the subfloor. And then I've got this wonderful stuff, which is Zinzir Bullseye. Um, they've got a few different ones of these. This is exterior, it's waterproof. Um, it's a primer, it's a sealer, and it's a stain killer. I've used it with tons of times before. Quite, you know, on MDF, it's brilliant. Um, and on ply, it's really good. It's just that the wood sucks this stuff in. So this is gonna be have to be used quite liberally. Sorry, quite sparingly, otherwise I'd go through five of these tins. Uh, it would just drink it all. So, uh, but it's really good stuff. Um, I'm gonna use this because I'm gonna apply some little panels. So this is uh, 18 mil. Obviously this is the cousin of the floor. So, um, which is quite nice to use the offcuts, to be honest. Um, so this is 18 mil. I'm then gonna put some panels down the side and around the top and bottom which is gonna be six mil ply. So in total, I've 24, I've got a 25 mil void, so it's gonna cover it nicely. So I'm happy with that. I didn't want too much steel exposed. So actually around the edges, it's all gonna be, and it have a bit of a panel in the middle to make it look like, well, kind of a door shoot. So there's probably gonna be five or six different coats going on tonight um, and early tomorrow morning. All with sanding in between. Uh, the reason you sand in between, it might sound counterintuitive, but you're actually not trying to smooth it at all. You're trying to rough it up, certainly along the edges uh, and the tops. The reason you want to rough it up is because you want to expose the fibres to allow the material to absorb more of the product you're putting on it. So if it's the Zinzir, the rougher the, rougher the surface, the more it will seek in. Uh, as I said, though, it will drink it all up if uh, given the chance. So, um, yeah, a really kind of therapeutic evening of just process going through this. They're all quite small boards. It's all really manageable. So, to be honest, I'm really looking forward to it. So, um, no doubt tomorrow you'll see how that uh, turns out. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. I hope you're all very well. Do take care. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye.